Good morning. I think we'll get uh, started here. We have a couple announcements uh, right off the bat. I think Darlene has one. I have a number of people have asked me about donating clothes and if we're going to have a clothes giveaway uh, this way this year. And people have been donating clothes. We encourage you to keep bringing clothes. But we made it a policy uh, lately to try to give away as it comes in so we don't have a big stockpile. And we're able to get it to places that need it. And uh, it seems to be a little more effective. So uh, please bring in clothes, medicine, all of that. We will make sure it gets distributed. And don't we do any use the mic, please? So they can hear you. Good morning, church. Today, I have on my construction hat, okay? You can see these spikes, it's really a construction <laughs> hat, okay? Um, you, as you know, Rod has been working with his family, providing a roof, we did the roof. Uh, there's been donations made from this church family. We have beds, we have dishes, we have oh, so many things we've been given, but we're in dire need of tile. If you have some leftover tile in your garage, we don't care if it matches somebody else's tile. If we can get all the tile pieces together, and at least if we could do one of the bedrooms and get the girl back home where she belongs, that would be wonderful. So if you have some leftover tile and you would like to donate it, please contact either Rod or myself after church. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dylan. I think we'll have Robert uh, come up. Robert's going to do our first reading today. And uh, Lord God, I would uh, just uh, ask you to go before us today in our worship. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you that we can worship and praise the Almighty God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. A reading from the 14th chapter of Genesis. After Abram returned from defeating Kedarlaomer and the kings allied with him, the king of Sodom came out to meet him in the valley of Shava, that is, the king's valley. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High, and he blessed Abram, saying, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth, and praise be to God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the people and keep the goods for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, With raised hand I have sworn an oath to the Lord God Most High, creator of heaven and earth, that I will accept nothing belonging to you, not even a thread or the strap of a sandal, so that you will never be able to say, I made Abram rich. I will accept nothing but what my men have eaten and the share that belongs to the men who went with me, to Anir, Eshkol, and Mamre. Let them have their share. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see you all, even though the numbers are dwindling. It's so good to see people here worshiping. Please stand with us as we worship the Lord this morning.
Please be seated. Jesus away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children, for the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the childless women, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. And then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if people do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting the lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, oh, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, Hmm, if you were the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. And one of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he said this, he breathed his last. Thanks, Lord. At this time, we'll uh, take up our offering.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for these gifts. We thank you for the giver. Lord God, our prayer is that uh, they would be put to work for your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please be seated. Just uh, curious, uh, keep getting, Dave and I keep putting out fewer and fewer chairs, but <laughs> I'm curious, is there anyone that's new here today that hasn't been here before or has on their way down? How about those that are on their way back? And, you know, I found that over the last couple of weeks just asking uh, who's going to be uh, leaving, not that we're glad to see you go, but <laughs> I find that it has given me an opportunity to just pray for you. And so, uh, if any of you are going to be leaving this week, I'm just going to ask you to stand. And if you are going to be going, oh, Lord God, we just uh, thank you for Win and Lou, and we just pray for them. We pray and bless them in their coming and their going. And Lord God, that uh, their trip would be uneventful, would be safe. And we just thank you for their blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor Al? Yes. Was there someone new? Okay. Yeah. I haven't been here for two years, but I have some before. Okay. Yeah. Good, good to have you. Welcome back. Right on. Welcome. Nice to have you back. Alrighty. And uh, continue to pray for the Ukraine. Uh, we're very fortunate. They are less fortunate than we are today. And uh, continue to pray. There's a few in our, not in our midst today, but are home that aren't doing well. Uh, Peggy Ross, I keep her in your prayers. And uh, somebody else was on my brain, but Peter, but he's here today. So. But, uh, Let's just spend a moment just in silent prayer, because there's always those people on our hearts that uh, we need to pray for. So. I just want to ask for prayer that uh, God would put our eyes on your hearing. Okay. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I lost my hearing aid, and that's my good one in my good ear. So I've been looking all over for it, so we're praying that God would just place our eyes on something we can see. So Lord God, thank you for this day. We just pray for the Ukraine. We lift up the people there that are in turmoil. We pray, Lord God, your hand would be upon them, that you would guide them and lead them, that you would bring them comfort. Father, we also pray for Just uh, whatever causes these messes that uh, we know you're in control and uh, we would just uh, ask that you would speed up what needs to be slowed down. Lord God, too, I just uh, thank you for the privilege of being able to worship here. Thank you for people that come and people that go. Lord, just bless them and their coming and their going. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And as Jesus taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> this uh, message today before we have communion is uh, why we have communion and uh, the reason for it. But it, it all evolves around a high priest. 
Uh, last week we were talking about that hope that we have, that anchor uh, to our soul that's firm and secure. And it enters, it says, into the inner sanctuary behind the curtain, that rope that we have, that anchor that we have, and it's tied to our Lord Jesus Christ. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. And last week you asked who Melchizedek was. I said, well, good question. I'll uh, try to explain a little bit, but it's got a lot to do with who our Lord is and his priesthood over us. Because it doesn't come from human lineage, it comes from the order of Melchizedek. And to understand that a little bit, it's, it's basically found in, in quite a few places in the scriptures. Uh, it's found um, in Hebrews that we're going to read about today. It's also found in Genesis chapter 14, 17 to 24, if you'd like to read that. In fact, Robert read it to you this morning. But it's interesting about this curtain that was torn and this priest, this high priest that has gone through it, who is Jesus Christ. And when Jesus was crucified, like in the passage that Lynn read, we see at the end that, that right when it was finished, right when Christ was breathing his last breath, that this curtain was torn from the top to the bottom. This curtain in the, in the sanctuary of the Almighty God that, that kept people from entering or seeing into the inner sanctuary, the place of the Most High God. Not that God had to be there or was there, because God can be anywhere at any time in any place. But yet, it was a place that was called the Holy of Holies. It was a place that was, was sacred. It was a place that only a priest from the line of Levi could go once a year. And before you could even go in there and sprinkle the blood of, uh, of a bull or a goat or anything else that was sacrificed, before he could go in there, he had to cleanse himself. And then he could enter and then he could provide blood sacrifices from bulls and goats and lambs and anything you could afford. It might even be a sacrifice of a dove if you were cheap and couldn't afford a bull or a goat. But these sacrifices were could only be given by this priest who could only enter once a year and could ask for forgiveness for your souls. I, uh, I thought about this curtain and I, like I say, sometimes my brain goes in different directions on things and, and I thought about this curtain being torn and I, I remember the only curtain that I was ever behind <laughs> was one time, and it wasn't a musical, they wouldn't let me play musical instruments or sing, but I think I was, I was reading something, I don't even remember. But I remember they opened the curtain and there I stood, and they turned the lights on, and I was blinded. And not only was I blinded, but I was dumbfounded. I, I just, just stood there. Couldn't say a word, couldn't even read my part, whatever it was. To this day, I don't even remember. I just remember being, those lights hitting my eyes and just standing there and going just in sheer terror. And... I don't know why I thought of that, but, it, but I, I, I want somehow to, for all of us to relate what that is to be before this curtain. <laughs> this curtain that went into this inner sanctuary. And I believe that when it did open, or that we are in the presence of the Almighty God, and we are in the presence of this light that is going to... I, do you realize, I, I, I remember this one time, I preached in a building and it had a window behind, and this is kind of a vain thing, but it was when I was getting older and 
hairs rather than growing out of my head started growing out of my ears and on top of my ears and I don't know why it they, does that, but it does. And, and But I remember this light behind me and I remember lifting up my phone and, and looking at this light revealing all this ugliness. And I thought, oh, what a mess. <laughs> and, but that's what it's like. This, this, this almighty God, when we come to this place of this curtain, to get to this inner sanctuary, to get to be in the presence of God, we need to look at ourselves in that light. That light is there for a reason. That light is there to expose our ugliness. It's to expose our darkness. It's to expose our sin. And we need to ask for forgiveness for that. Before we can be in the presence of God. That was the purpose of Jesus dying on the cross. I remember in a little cabin up in a place called Big Mountain, on the Sikini River and it was built by someone that was a lot shorter than I was because the door was only like this high. I remember there used to be a lot of buffalo, wild buffalo that used to come in at night and try to get the grain we had stored for the horses and we tried to fence them off the best we could but buffalo you don't fence them off, they just push their way in. And and so every once in a while I had a bell hanging on a, on a little stick they had to go under and when the bell would ring I knew the buffalo were coming so I'd jump up and I'd go running out there to chase them off and bang, I'd hit my head on that door and just, you know what that's like, Peter? <laughs> it just cold cocked me, just flattened me. I didn't lay there on my back and I did this two or three times like you think you'd be smart, right? And about the third time that I hit my head and I was laying there and I picked my hat up and I thought, my word, why do I keep doing this? And I had my hat in my hand and I realized, it's vanity. It's vanity. I've been up here for two months and I haven't had a shower and my hair is a mess and that's why I put my hat on to cover up my ugliness, to cover up that ugly mass of hair that I had then. And when I put my hat on, I couldn't see the ledge above the door, and that's why. And I thought, take your hat off. So from then on, I slept without my hat, and I didn't hit my head anymore. But this stage that we're in, I, I, I read this at the men's group. Shakespeare said this. It's not in the Bible. Don't look for it. Shakespeare said it. And this is what he said. It was from actually a play or a sonnet that he wrote, as, as you like it. Act 2, scene 7, I believe. Line 139. But I, I kind of like this because I, when I read it, I thought, yeah, that's, that's what it's like. And he says this in that line. All of the world is a stage. All of the world is stage, and all men and women are merely players. They're merely players. They have their exits, and they have their entrances, and one man in his time plays several parts. And I thought about that, and I thought, you know, that's so true, you know. We... <laughs> This world is a stage, but there'll be a time, there'll be a final act that we'll have to go through, and that's called death. And we'll have to go before that curtain. And I'm talking about the world. I believe the curtain has been opened for those of us that love the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are attached to him. I always think about that. I always thought anchors held something, but I didn't realize that Jesus was there pulling the boat in.
Ele é eterno. But what does it have to do with Melchizedek? Well, I'm glad you asked. I, uh, I wrote down a couple things about it. You can read more about it too, but it, it's very interesting uh, who this guy was and what he was. He was a priest. And it says in Hebrews 6.20, he, Jesus, has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. And I'll just read this because I don't have to paraphrase it. I'll just read it from the scriptures and then you'll know who we're talking about. It says in starting in chapter 7, I thought I'd have this on the where you can read it, but go home and read it. You can read all through chapter 6, 7, and 8. This Melchizedek was king of Salem and the priest of the God Most High, and he met Abraham returning from defeat of the kings, and he blessed him. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. First, the name Melchizedek means king of righteousness. Then also it means king of Salem. It means king of peace. And without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, resembling the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. Just think how great he was. Even the patriarch Abraham gave him a tenth of the plunder. Now the law requires the descendants of Levi. Now here's a twist. This is something that, that you have to wrap your brain around after you read it to find out who Melchizedek really was. And so here's a twist. Now the law requires the descendants of Levi who became priests to collect a tenth from the people. That is from their fellow Israelites even though they are also descendants of Abraham. This man, however, Melchizedek, did not trace his descendants from Levi. Yet he collected a tenth from Abraham, and he blessed him who had the promises. And without doubt, the lesser is blessed by the greater. In the one case, the tenth is collected by people who die but in the other case by him who is declared to be living. One might even say that Levi, and this is a, the twist here, now Levi, when you, when you look at this and you go back and read, you re realize that Melchizedek blessed Abraham before the Levitical priesthood was established. And it says, one might say then that Levi, who collects the tenth, paid the tenth through Abraham because when Melchizedek met Abraham, Levi was still in the body of his ancestors. He wasn't even alive yet. So what's so, so important about this lineage, this line of Melchizedek? is because he was from God, he was a high priest, and Jesus, when you, when you look at Jesus, what connected that to Jesus Christ? Well, it says Jesus went through this curtain in the line, in the order of Melchizedek. In other words, he didn't have to be a Levi. Jesus was not a Levi. Jesus was from the tribe of Judah. But yet he went through the curtain because he was God. And he reigns as our high priest forever and ever. I, I just want to close this today by, you see, Jesus, when you, when you look, it was interesting. Years ago, I did a message on the book of Matthew. <laughs> and 
when I started it, Matthew 1 is a genealogy of Christ. And when I started, I just read it. And I thought, how am I going to finish this? Like, it's not very interesting. <laughs> Until you get to Jesus. But I, I just stopped for a second. And I had it up on one of those old overheads. You know, you, you had a, a thing that put it up on a thing. And I had the genealogy written there. And I was going through it so people could read it as I was talking about different people in it and got down to Jesus. And, and I just stopped for a moment and I, I thought, well, where am I going to go with this? Like, this is boring. And I, I just said, you see all these names that are written in Matthew? And then I... I read the verse out of Revelation about having our names written in the book of life and I said, will your name be written in the book of life? And I explained what Hebrews is explaining to us here is the way to that inner sanctuary to be with God forever is through Jesus Christ. And I left the light on I said, if, if there's somebody here that that name is not written in the book of life. Come and write it down. I, I remember people getting up and just <laughs> coming to the front and taking a pen and writing their name. It was the most humbling experience I think that I ever had as a pastor. What the Holy Spirit was doing through a, a few names through the lineage of Jesus Christ, the genealogy of Christ, who descended from Abraham, who was born into the tribe of Judah. He wasn't a priest. He was a priest. He's our high priest. He's our holy priest. He's entered into the holiest of holies. He wasn't a Levi. He's a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Hope that helps. See, Jesus, our high priest, is the one who's taken away our sins when he died on the cross for those sins. That's when that curtain was torn. From the top to the bottom, not from the bottom. Men didn't do it. He was torn from the top to the bottom. He's taken away our sins and he's allowed us access to God the Father and the most holy of holies. I think I'm all done, but I did write down some things here because I, I, I think all of us will or have been before this curtain. And you know, it's amazing when you get before that curtain, like I was saying when we we're on that, I was on that stage and all of a sudden I could realize all my ugliness was exposed through this light. And I realized God looks at us. It's not about who we were. It's not about what church we went to all our life. It's not about how much money we gave to God and thought that was good. It's not about how much we did for God, running here and there and everywhere, doing our best. And it's not that you came from a Christian family. You can't claim that one either. And it's not from being born into the tribe of Levi. You see, the only way to enter through that curtain into that inner sanctuary through the blood of Jesus Christ. And when the light is upon us and revealing to us some of our inadequacies, <laughs> that's the time when we need to take off our hat and show God our ugliness and say, Lord God, forgive me my sins. You see, that's the only way to enter this inner sanctuary is through Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the one that died on the cross for our sins. 
the one who went before us and now sits at the right hand of God waiting to come back. It's by his forgiveness. It's by his blood. It's not by our sacrifices. I'll ask Sue to come up and uh, help me with communion. I think that'll be enough today, I think. But I wanted to read to you the, the Last Supper uh, from the book of Matthew. And then I'll ask uh, Paul to just usher you forward and Sue and I will administer communion to you. On the first day of the festival of the unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and they asked him, what do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? And he replied, go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time is near and I'm going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So they went just as Jesus had told them and and just as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. And when evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad, and they began to say to him, one after the other, Surely you don't mean it's me, Lord. I don't know why they don't read that off. Because you see, it's the people in the world that I believe would ask that same question. Surely you don't mean it would be me, Rabbi. And Jesus answered to Judas, you said so. And while they were reading, Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body, which will be given for you. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. He said, I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now until the day when I drink it, anew with you in my Father's kingdom. This is why we celebrate the Lord's Supper. Because we're remembering what Christ Jesus has done for us. That he gave himself, as like it says in John 3, 16, for God so loved us, so loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, Shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I invite you to come. Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians, For I received from the Lord what I have also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread and after he had given thanks, he said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and he said, this is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you will proclaim the Lord's death until he returns. May God bless all of you. I think we have one more song. I had a Bible. This is starting to get used a little bit now, but 
I went to visit a pastor in the hospital in Edmonton one time, and he was dying of cancer, they thought. But we felt as a bunch of pastors, we could go in and put our hands on him and pray for him. And so we did, and the nurse stopped me at the door because he was in intensive care, and she said, you can't take that Bible in with you. And <laughs> I thought, well, okay. So I went outside, and I pulled, tore the page out. I was going to read to him and put it in my pocket and went in. And uh, we prayed over Don and read him the scripture. And he's alive today. God is good. Would you stand, please? Thank you.